Hey friend, Chris Vandeviver here from WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today, I want to give you a full walkthrough, a master class on how to set up headphone mixes in Logic Pro, especially how to set up headphone mixes for individual you know, performers or artists or whoever's working with you. So if the bassist wants a separate headphone mix from that of the vocalist or the guitar player, easy, not a big deal. It just takes a little bit of routing, but really you can accomplish this many times over for as many artists that need independent headphone mixes. Actually, a year or two ago, I filmed a video all about headphone mixes in Logic, but at that time, it was a relatively new factor feature of Logic that we were able to send our different tracks to various outputs on our audio interfaces. And since that video, there has been a lot of questions related to setting up headphone mixes. So I just thought, why not hit this topic again and really give you all the details that you'll need so you can do this on your own. Before we get started, it's really important that your audio interface has the following. Number one, your audio interface has multiple headphone outputs. So if we take a look at Safari real quick, this is the interface that I'm using, the Apogee Ensemble, and has two separate headphone outputs, and it also has many different outputs based on a D sub. But if we take a look at the Focusrite Scarlet, here we go, two headphone outputs, and if we take a look at the back of the unit, many line outputs. I'll explain why that might be important to you. Number two, your audio interface also has to allow you to route audio to each of the different headphone outputs independently from one another or the main stereo output. So you have to be able within your mix software for your audio interface, be able to send audio to this headphone output separate from this headphone output. The other thing I highly recommend is that if you go right up to mix here in Logic and go down to IO labels, I would go ahead and set all of the inputs and outputs for your audio device from Logic's generic tags of input one or output one, two, and set them to the names provided by your audio interface. So it's really easy. You just select the top you know, input, go down to the bottom output, hold shift, and then you select all of the different inputs and outputs of your audio interface. If you just click the radio button right in the provided by driver, you'll be able to switch all of the labels to a much easier and recognizable way of navigating the different outputs of your audio interface. And we'll close that right up and let's get started. So I've loaded one of the starter grids that comes with Logic. I love these starter grids. We'll take a quick listen. I'll open the mixer here and let's just take a quick listen to this one scene that I have loaded. Nothing too crazy. Now, if we want to set up a headphone mix for the two independent headphones that I have on my Apogee Ensemble, again, one and two, it's really simple. We're going to select the first track in the session and we're going to go all the way to the end right before the stereo output in the master channel strips. I'm going to hold shift and click. Now we've selected every single channel strip. This includes all of the instrument tracks, all of the MIDI tracks, everything and also any auxiliary channel strips that are for reverb, delay, or parallel effects. In the next open send field for all of the channel strips, we'll click, go to output, go to stereo. In this case, I'm gonna set output three, four for the first headphone. And we can see a channel strip has been created for output three, four. And we'll do the same thing, go to output, stereo, output five, six. Now the Apogee Ensemble software labels these different outputs as playback three, four, playback five, six, your audio interface might be different. Now, before we start to create these headphone mixes, let's just take a quick look. If we contract this a little bit and let's just open the Apogee control software. This is the software that I'm using for routing all of the different audio. And we can see here we have headphone one and headphone two, and they're set to different playback systems. So in this case, you know, headphone one is set to playback one, two, the headphone two is set to playback five, six. That's fine. I just want to show you when we start to play the scene in logic that no audio is going to be playing through the meters for headphone one or two. But first I got to set headphone one to three, four. So we got three, four, five, six. It's three, four and five, six here. You can see that. Okay. Let's hit play and see what happens. So we can see that the main stereo output has audio playing through it, but neither of the headphones. Okay, cool. 
I'm going to option click so we can set the send level to zero for both headphone mixes. And now when I hit play, we should see some volume going through to the headphones. Check it out. Awesome. Now you may notice that the level is different for the headphones as compared to the stereo output. There's a reason for this. Now that audio is passing through to our headphones, all of the plugins on the stereo output are not in the chain processing the entire mix. And that's why the level is slightly quieter. Now, to be honest, you don't want things like the multipressor or the limiter to be in the signal path in your session when you're recording because they introduce latency. But, you know, just to demonstrate the fact that this is the reason why the levels are different, I'm just going to quickly copy and paste all of these plugins to the headphone outputs. Okay, now if we take a look at the meters in all directions, let's play. Now the biggest question when it comes to headphone mixes is whether you should be pre-fader or post-fader. And what that means is if we click on the send fields here, we can set our sends either to pre-fader, post-fader, or post-pan. We're just gonna focus on pre-fader and post-fader. At the moment, we're in post-fader mode. So any adjustments made to any of these faders in the mixer will have an impact, will be audibly heard in the headphone mixes. And in fact, I'm actually recording playback three, four directly into the Apogee Ensemble so we can hear the headphone mix independent from the main monitor mix. So let's check that out right now. I'll actually adjust the level of the kick as we listen, and you'll hear that in the headphone mix. However, if the kick is set to pre-fader, any level adjustments I make to this fader will not be heard in the headphone mix for 3-4. So check it out. So we can see that there's no kick signal in the main monitor mix that the engineer, the person that's manning the computer would be able to hear. But in the headphone mix, the kick is still there. Pre-fader mode is perfect when we're trying to create an independent mix for our artists and performers. We select all of the tracks and I'm just going to go here and I'm going to set both headphone mixes to pre-fader. Now, any sort of fader adjustments that have been made in the mixer will have no impact on the headphone mixes. So if we listen, things are going to sound a little different in terms of the tonal balance, the balance of the whole mix. Take a listen. Okay, so that's a little crazy. It would at least be helpful to have all of these fader adjustments applied to the headphone mix to begin with, and then we can make adjustments based on what the artist needs. Super simple. Again, you wanna make sure that all the channel strips are selected, so you can do this all in one shot. If we click on the send field for each headphone mix, we can go down to copy fader to sends. What will happen is, is that all of these fader adjustments across the session will be applied to the send levels for each headphone mix. Check it out. Okay, we can see that some adjustments have been made. Let's do the same thing for the other headphone mix. Okay, let's take a listen now to the headphone mix and hear how everything's placed in the mix. Exactly as we have heard it through this video so far. Now, for this particular artist, let's say 3-4 is for the guitar player. Maybe the guitar player doesn't want as much bass. So let's start to turn down the bass, but instead of turning down the fader, because as we know, it's gonna make no impact on the headphone mix, we can adjust the send level instead. And maybe we want more ambient keys. And a little less kick. Awesome. And now we can create an independent headphone mix for the guitarist on 3-4 and for maybe the drummer on 5-6. So let's make some adjustments right now. We'll just, you know, randomly adjust a couple just to say we did. Cool. Now we have two separate headphone mixes for each artist or musician. If you feel that using the send dials is a little claustrophobic, it's not as fine resolution as using the faders, that's easy. You can just go to sends on faders right in the top of the mixer, click the power button, 
And then from the drop down, just select the appropriate output. So for three, four, now we can see all of these send levels placed on the faders. And we can adjust the levels using the faders or the send dials. If you don't see sends on faders at the top of your mixer, it's probably because you have a smaller screen. Easy. Just click on the appropriate send field and go down to sends on faders. And then you can have sends on faders available to you across the mixer. And you just go back to the send field and turn it off when you need to. Now, a big question is, is how do you work with reverb and delay sends? How do you set a specific reverb amount for one artist, but not the other? Well, let's solo the snare. And then I'll go right up here to single. And now we can see only the routing applied to the snare track. So we can see we have reverb if we want to use it. We haven't dialed up any reverb or delay yet for the snare, but let's do it right now. Let's dial up full blast of reverb to the reverb channel strip for the snare. Take a listen. Okay, that's a lot of reverb. Now let's go to the send dial for the reverb for playback three, four and bring it down. Awesome. And we can even adjust the fader for the overall reverb for the main monitor mix because it's probably quite loud there too. And maybe our drummer really wants a ton of reverb because he just loves it on that snare drum. And this would be applied to the other headphone mix that we're not recording at the moment. But just like that, we've adjusted the level of the reverb for the snare for three independent mixes. The main monitor mix across the faders here for headphones one and two. I'm going to now unsolo. We'll go back to the full view of the mixer. The other question is, is let's say that you are manning your Mac and you are the person in charge of the recording session. And let's say the vocalist is singing right along to the track, but you want to solo the vocals and take a listen, or maybe you want to solo something completely you know, different in the session because you're hearing something and you know, you want to take a quick listen, take a deep dive into what's going on on that particular channel strip and track. However, if we just solo, let's say the piano here, check it out. This is going to be a problem because the vocalist is trying to sing along to the session and the moment that you solo a channel strip is going to take them completely out of the song and mix. So if we go down to our stereo outputs here and we go to three, four, I'm going to hold control and click on the solo button. We've now set the output for headphone one to a solo safe mode. So what happens if I now go to that bass track and then solo it to take a quick listen to what's going on there? No soloing will occur in that headphone mix. Check it out. But if we take a listen to the main monitor mix, all we're going to hear is just the bass. Pretty handy. Again, just control, click, solo safe those headphone mixes to ensure that you don't accidentally take that artist out of the mix as they're trying to record and perform. Earlier in the video, we discussed the various line outputs on several different audio interfaces, the Ensemble, this Focusrite Scarlet, and this can be a great resource if you need to expand on your headphone capabilities. Logic can supply up to 12 sends on each channel strip, so that's about as many headphone outputs as you can have, but we need an audio interface that can supply us with you know, up to 12 headphone outputs. Now, like we mentioned, the first two headphone outputs are available on this particular unit for us to route. And on the back, we have these line outputs, meaning we can introduce a separate headphone amplifier to send out the remaining sets of outputs to other headphones. Outputs one and two would be for your speakers, so they would be accounted for already. But three and four, five and six, all the way through nine and 10, you'd have four sets of stereo outputs that you can send to a headphone amplifier. Unfortunately, many headphone amplifiers don't allow for many inputs. If we take a look at this art headphone amplifier here, this is similar to the one that I have. If we take a look at the back, we have several stereo aux inputs, but they're all just one single connective bit instead of the two that we need. Reminder, the Scarlet has pairs of TRS outputs. And that's how we would have to send them from Logic. 
And you would think, well, can't we just sum the two signals together to this one output using maybe a cable like this? And actually the answer is no, this is not a possibility. You can split a single signal into two, that's A-OK, -okay, but it's not wise to take two separate signals and sum them to one. And if we take a look at this Behringer headphone amplifier, again, there are several aux inputs, but they're all single inputs and not stereo. I did find, however, a Tascam headphone amplifier that allows for a whole lot of inputs. It has two main inputs, plus eight sets of direct stereo inputs for each of the headphone outputs. And there's a pretty significant difference in price here. It's $459 for this unit, where the ART or ART headphone amplifier is $235. The Behringer unit's at $149, so you will have to spend more to get this sort of functionality where we can send from multiple outputs out of the interface into a headphone amplifier because we need to accept stereo pairs because we'll need to accept stereo inputs for each of the headphones. So I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly recommend subscribing to the YouTube channel, YLogic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, YLogicProRules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new emails, and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Thanks so much.